It's summer of 2023 and I'm back in Alaska here in uh, Soldovia, one of my favorite spots. Of course, it's the middle of summer and I just returned from Oshkosh where I was able to meet up with helicopter aerobatics pilot Scott Urschel. I met up with Scott just after he delivered his debut aerobatics performance at Oshkosh 2023 and uh, asked him a little bit about the helicopter, what it takes to fly this incredible routine and also a little bit about the machine and the aircraft, its maneuverability and performance characteristics. So here's Scott. And Boston has helicopters ready to lift. I got the boxes here, it's clear for takeoff from the ground. Clear for takeoff. My name is Scott Urschel. I'm the owner of Pylon Aviation Services. We're based out of Chandler, Arizona. We uh, operate out of Papa 19 Stellar Air Park, uh, and we actually live at the air park as well. I'm the distributor for Airbus helicopters for the US and Canada. Uh, that's my day job, and uh, on the weekends, I uh, practice helicopter aerobatics in our B0105 helicopter, formerly manufactured by MBB Measureschmitt Bocal Bohem in Germany. Uh, later purchased by American Eurocopter and then uh, by uh, Airbus Helicopters. So this is a, a 1981 model B0105 uh, CBS-4. It is uh, originally designed as a military helicopter and then became a very prominent medevac helicopter. This, this helicopter was based in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. It was a uh, medevac helicopter for most of its life till uh, we bought it about five or six years ago. My partner and I bought it and uh, refurbished it and it's a completely stock B0105. Uh, my dad and my uncles were all in the Second World War, uh, so there's 50 stars on the tail of this helicopter, uh, as there is the American flag behind me. And um, my helmet's red, white, and blue. Uh, my good friend Jesse James uh, painted that for me and uh, sent it to me, told me to send him my helmet, and he would paint it. I had no idea what was coming back. and uh, So it's just an honor. Uh, for, for us to fly this helicopter and to honor the men and women that have given their life for our country. Yeah, we're, we're in America. This is the greatest place in the world. Uh, you can't do this all over the world. Medevac, search and rescue, police work, long line, firefighting. I think that the most important thing that I can uh, share with new pilots is, is you need to find a mentor and you need to find people with the tribal knowledge. Uh, you know, I was very fortunate as a young pilot with just several hundred hours to have some of the best helicopter pilots as my mentors uh, and seek those people out, seek the information, become an expert on the machine you fly. Uh, don't take anything for granted. There is so much information available to young pilots out there today that you really, really need to force yourself to go out and search out those people, and they are will, more than willing to help you. Well, as a young boy, I was uh, driving down a, a road in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I saw a helicopter land at a resort, and I went up and uh, talked to the pilot, and he was the sales rep for Hughes Helicopters at the time. He had landed a Hughes 500. I, I've always wanted to fly helicopters. My uncle, when I was five, took me for a ride in his helicopter, and uh, I started my flight training shortly after meeting this gentleman, and uh, later I helped him ferry helicopters and sell helicopters. Uh, I had a manufacturing company and we uh, built uh, rifle and pistol reloading equipment. A good friend of mine was a very experienced uh, helicopter or fixed wing pilot. And uh, he asked me to teach him to fly helicopters and his boys. Uh, this progressed into uh, a whole business venture where I bought a Hughes 500 helicopter, uh, used it for utility work and uh, developed my skill set along the way of that process, I met uh, a mechanic named Mike Collins from Boeing Helicopter Company now, uh, and the chief test pilot, former chief test pilot for Hughes Helicopters, McDonnell Douglas, and Boeing, uh, Rich Lee. Rich was a, a uh, experimental exhibition test pilot. He flew air show displays in the 300, Hughes 300, Hughes 500, uh, McDonnell Douglas 900, and uh, eventually the Boeing Apache uh, AH-64. Uh, he was just a great mentor to me, and uh, as a young as a young pilot, uh, I was able to experience rolling and looping a helicopter in 1989, uh, the first time, and uh, later uh, was checked out in the Notar helicopter in the 90s to do aerobatics. Uh, currently, I have a uh, statement of aerobatic competency in all models 500 helicopters and the B0105 behind us here. Um, I fly a variety of fixed-wing aircraft as well. Uh, 
it's it's a constant learning experience and just remember there's so much to learn you'll never learn everything uh, recently I met uh, a gentleman named Bill Thompson his father was Tommy Thompson uh, Tommy was one of the first 100 helicopter pilots in the United States Sikor Igor Sikorsky was number one uh, Tommy uh, was in the military and ended up getting a job working for Sikorsky helicopters as a test pilot uh, during his experimental test flying he was trying to do some envelope expansion for a military program and went out and looped the S-76 helicopter. Uh, Igor found out about that and uh, called him into his office and asked him, uh, are you out looping my helicopter, Tommy? And he apologized and and uh, Igor, as the story goes, uh, said, well, no, don't apologize. I want you to know how, I want to know how low you can do it so we can get film. If you go to YouTube, you can Google first helicopter loop and see Tommy looping the S-52 in 1949. Since then, it's been a standard uh, practice of a lot of helicopter companies for envelope expansion for the military. So this is not unusual uh, to helicopter industry, it's just unusual to the flight display. It's very uh, costly to practice uh, and have a machine in experimental category. Uh, moreover, you need good mentoring. Uh, fortunately, I had an excellent mentor uh, as, as a, a lot of the other uh, helicopter aerobatic display pilots. So this, this helicopter uh, is certified at plus 3.4 G's positive and negative one. One of, one of the few helicopters that has that large of uh, uh, G certification. Uh, most helicopters are plus three zero uh, and can't really go negative without having, having uh, problems. The unique, most unique feature of this helicopter is the rotor system. Uh, this rotor system is a titanium rotor hub it's a rigid or bearingless hingeless rotor system. All of the lead lag and flapping moments in the rotor system are in the rotor blades. It's a fully composite one piece rotor blade. Uh, it is, um, all of the rotor hub is titanium. Uh, we have a dual hydraulic system. The, the loads on the rotor system are fairly high. So the, the aircraft has two hydraulic systems that are running in parallel. Uh, so if we were to have a hydraulic failure of the uh, flight control system, it will automatically switch to the backup system. Pilot will never even know other than a light indication. Um, it cannot be flown without hydraulics, so uh, that's why we have two hydraulic systems in it. The tail boom is uh, aluminum as well. Most tail booms on helicopters are a monocoque structure. This has longerons that run down the tail boom to increase the uh, strength of the tail boom. Uh, the tail rotor system is the same. It's a, a titanium hub and the horizontal stabilizer uh, is all aluminum as well. It's a teetering tail rotor, okay. and it's uh, the hub and the uh, shaft are all titanium, which is, is unusual. Yeah. Most helicopters, uh, th those are aluminum, but because of the loads on it, um, that, that's the reason why the, the uh, BL-105 uh, was designed that way. The Rolls-Royce Allison has actually two separate exhaust stacks that come out of a single turbine yeah. exhaust, similar to a PT-6. Okay. But yeah, we're, uh, we have our end number inverted, as you can see, so uh, it's, um, it's great. I'm sure you'll uh, have some video of it upside down. You can show it. Early in my uh, uh, helicopter career, I bought and sold uh, used helicopters. <clears throat> uh, and then <clears throat> in about 2008, I started to do that full time. <clears throat> I fly all models of the Airbus up through the uh, H145 Delta III. Um, I've done a lot of test flying and certification for a number of different uh, systems, STCs, that we've put on the A-Star as well. And uh, so now I'm the distributor for the U.S. and Canada and uh, love my job. Nuclear Aircraft has a full data acquisition system in it. So it's recording 32 channels of data. I use this as a training aid uh, to uh, be able to send to my uh, instructor mentor uh, to debrief my practice flights and my air show displays as well. The helicopter is unique in the fact that we don't really want to have a lot of G-forces and so we can modulate the G-forces on the helicopter by cyclic and collective. So the collective collectively pitches all the rotor blades uh, and by lowering the collective we can reduce G-forces and also by forward cyclic. So when you roll the helicopter you're increasing the angle of attack of the, of the rotor blade, of one blade and not of the other. So as we lower the collective, the coupling forces cause the helicopter to roll and to pitch down. So as I, as I roll inverted and I use this collective input, I can increase roll rate and I can also pitch the nose up. So it is really opposite of what you would think. So there's a, a lot of physics behind 
how this happens. It isn't uh, um, just like an airplane. You don't know, you take somebody up in an airplane, and I take people up all the time in fixed wing and have them pitch up and roll the airplane for me. Um, not, not so much in the helicopter. The loop and the, the, the speed at which you enter the loops or do the loops, we can do the loops from 100 knots down to a hover. Uh, the, as the airspeed becomes slower and slower, the gyroscopic forces are uh, more prevalent than the aerodynamic forces. The only aerodynamic force we have in a hover is the lift of the rotor blade. As we pull the cyclic back to come back in the loop, uh, the gyroscopic forces want to yaw the helicopter. So normally when we're pulling power, we're pushing left pedal in a conventional rotating helicopter. Uh, when we do some of these uh, maneuvers, we're having to put opposite pedal in. And it, it, when I was learning some of these maneuvers uh, in the BO-105, because the gyroscopic forces are so prevalent, it was really mentally hard to put the wrong input in. All right, so I'll just do a nice uh, roll to the left. Okay. okay. And here we go. Three, two, one, we'll pitch up. Man, that's awesome. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah. On altitude. I noticed that. <laughs> and it just was stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I use this for my turnaround 2G, so I'll pitch up here. We'll do a split S turnaround. Speed comes to 60, inverted, down collective, fully back with the cyclic. That's exactly what you do in the display as well? Yeah. So I use that to turn around on yeah. the end, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And then I do some other maneuvers that uh, I've, I've got really kind of down on the turnarounds, but uh, I'm gonna do them next year. I do a thing called a bow turn. Yeah. Um, so we'll do a loop here, here we go, coming up, increasing rate. A little down collective over the top. Through a rotor wash. Like a steep turn. Yep. So steep right, turn in the vertical. So what you'll see here is you'll see these LED lights yep. coming on and off. Yep. They're connected to my torque meter and my TOT gauges. Okay. So I use which those. Which is the boss torque. With, no, which no, is no, 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 with, no. Which is engine uh, torque, engine torque yep. and engine temperature. Yep. So I have them set with quite a bit of margin in them. So you'll see them come left and engine. So right. when your eyes out, you don't have to. I don't have to look. Okay. This time, stay uh, feel on the collective and the okay. controls with me, and you okay. can kind of feel what I'm doing, and you'll yeah. see it's it's not anything radical. So that was 2.6 loop. Uh, all those maneuvers were 2.5. Well, I mean, not a big deal. Oh, here we go. Okay, clear overhead. We have no traffic within two. And we'll do another roll. Here we go. Pitching up. Down collective. A little more down around. All the way around. And then back up. That down collective really adds a lot of oh, the, you roll, can see how the roll. Oh, the roll. It just immediately, once you do that, it just yeah, immediately yeah. comes around. Okay. We'll yeah, the another, effect of that is. Another loop here, coming back up. Very little collective change. In Very little collective, yeah, just a little bit yep. of down, yep. so I don't over torque it, because yep. when I come a full half cyclic yep. is when I get the maximum torque. Okay. Then I'll pitch back up here. Down collective around, back fully back on the cyclic. And then I can do, like, as I do rolls at slower speeds, like at 90, I'll pitch up a little bit more, a little more down collective, all the way around. Yeah. Do you use a little bit of left uh, cyclic? Lots of left cyclic. Okay. In the, in the loop. Come around here. So as the airspeed decays off, the gyroscopic forces are quite high, yeah. and the tail rotor thrust is quite prolific. Yeah. So I need a lot of left cyclic. Yeah to stop that. So if you look on the flight data, yeah. you'll see how much left cyclic yeah. there is. So the higher speed rolls are not as much pitch up, a little pitch up. Down collective, all the way around. Back up collective, right pedal. There we go. Another one. As I roll inverted and I use this collective input, 
I can increase roll rate and I can also pitch the nose up. Wow. So it is really opposite of yeah. what you would think. Yeah, that's incredible. So there is a, a lot of physics behind how this happens. It isn't uh, um, just like an airplane, you know, you take somebody up in an airplane and I take people up all the time in fixed wing and have them pitch up and roll the airplane for me. Not, not so much in the helicopter. I think that's the fastest 180 you can do in a, in a helicopter. Oh, totally. I mean, if you want to turn around, split yeah, us. Yeah. I mean, you can see I don't, I, I, when I get to 60 knots, I roll inverted yeah. and then I just come aft cyclic because obviously air, uh, G is relative to air. And you're, sta you're not moving anything. You're stationary over the point. Over the point, just sip somewhere around. around. Yeah. Wow. So I've got a little bit of smash, but not, yeah. a, not a ton, so. I really love it. I love to be a trainer. Uh, I do a lot of recurrent training in a variety of, uh, of helicopters and fixed wing aircraft as well. And uh, the, the flight instruction uh, process, it's so re rewarding to teach somebody and have them learn and, and then see them be, be successful. So, so we'll hook you up no matter whether it's fixed wing or uh, uh, rotorcraft. There are some outstanding flight schools out there. Uh, that, that you can go to that specialize in, in whatever facet of aviation you're interested in. We have a maximum fuel weight. Uh, you know, typically when you see my display, uh, I have about 40 gallons in my main tank. Uh, that's kind of my max limit. Uh, the lighter the helicopter, the more reserve performance that we have. So we have torque limits uh, when we're cold. Uh, typically we're torque limited or very light. And then when we're hot, uh, like on a day, like the other day when I was performing, my limit was actually my temperature of both engines. So depending on the maneuvers we're doing, we're using max power uh, to, to enter the maneuvers and then lowering the pitch uh, to control the to over torques and, and so that we don't, don't uh, exceed any limits. You know, we don't have wings, so it's really hard to get your roll reference and pitch reference. So you can see that I have marks on the windscreen just as a reference and overhead, overhead I can see the runway. And then on your door right over there, there's actually a trim string uh, on this door right here, uh, along with the vertical line, because the door jam is not parallel to the mast. So I can tell when I'm vertical and I can look at the trim string to see if I'm losing airspeed because that will be perpendicular to the vertical. This yes, and that's something that I put on there as well. These are not normally on this, but th typically the A-Stars do uh, and the Robinsons and the helicopter like that, yeah. So, you know, you can't look at your turn and bank. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm looking, you know, to the left to make sure that I'm vertical. I'm looking at my trim strings. And then as I come from here, I'm looking overhead, picking up the uh, center, show center line and yeah, the horizon and coming around. So unlike an airplane. So, you know, normally a loop in an airplane is 3.5 to 4 Gs, depending on what you're flying. So it uh, most uh, most people I've given a ride to, I, great, I gave a ride to a uh, FAA test pilot uh, a couple years ago. And uh, uh, she was just marveled by how low G it was. and just how normal it felt. Gentle, yeah. It was actually uh, uh, sharing with my mentor, Rich Lee, uh, you know, I, I just fly the air show what I practice. I don't do anything any different. And I felt, you know, I, I do this all the time. I practice all the time. It, it is such an honor to be asked to fly at Oshkosh. Uh, this is certainly one of my bucket list items that I've always wanted to accomplish. And, you know, to be honest with you, I, I never thought in a million years I would be flying helicopters much less selling them for a living and having the opportunity uh, to do this. This is all volunteer. We volunteer our machines, uh, but it's just such an honor to be here to display our, our machines to uh, the general public. Great job, Scott, thank you.